brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. I am a stay-at-home mom of two young kids, and my husband is a business owner. Uh, I've been living with my head in, in the sand for the last couple of years as he's managed the money, and I've just recently discovered how poorly he's been doing that. Uh, we are in a, a world of debt right now and trying to find a path out of it. Okay. So what what caused you to suddenly become aware? Um, he called me one day and said, I'm going to tell you before you get home to see the mail today, but we got a foreclosure notice on our house. Oh, my gosh. Um, which was due to a second mortgage he took out on our house in order to purchase a warehouse for his business. Um, I naively thought, okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to cash out one of my 401ks, pay that off, get the house out of foreclosure, and then we're going to move forward and do everything right from here on out. Uh, That was very naive. As I started to dig deeper, I realized um, the trouble that the business was in. He has a huge overhead and is not making enough to sustain that. How old are Um, are you guys? I'm 39. He's 42. How long have you been married? Six years. When was the phone call on the foreclosure notice to you? Well... <clears throat> on the house or on now, when on did he call you what day when, how long oh. ago did he call you and say oh this was this was back in may may okay so you've been mm-hmm. you've been gathering more information and you all have been having more discussions for a couple of months now correct okay all right so um what is he now saying he is he has a very uh, motivated mindset and he feels like he just needs to keep pushing forward with the business and things are going to turn around any day any week and he's going to be able to fix all of this meanwhile it feels as if uh, things are not getting better things seem to be getting worse for twice this month he's not been able to make payroll for the employees um, I've found out about some IRS debt, some property tax that's delinquent. Um, so why are you, if once house. you discovered one thing, why does he, why do you not have a conversation when the two of you sit down and he tells you everything? Why are you having to continue to pull the thread on the sweater? Well, eventually he did. Once okay. I found out about the all right. IRS So we're, we're all on what's the same the total, page today. What's the total debt, Katie? Uh, including mortgages? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. About four point five million. Okay, and how much is the mortgage on your home? Um, our mortgage is we owe four hundred and eighty on the house mm-hmm. plus the additional the second mortgage, which is four hundred, so about eight eighty. Okay, what what's, the what's the house worth? What's the house worth? Probably one point one. Okay, what's the uh, mortgage on the warehouse? Is there one? Uh, the mortgage on the warehouse, yes, there is the mortgage on the warehouse. We owe about 3.3 on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the monthly payment on that is about 26,000. Mm-hmm. And what's it worth? It's worth 4.1, 4.2. Okay. Is it on the market for sale? Yes. I sat down with Good. It's on. Okay. So that's on the market. Is your home yeah. on the market yeah. for sale? No. Okay. And, um, So what other debt is there other than these two? Uh, There's credit card debt, which totals about Mm $120,000. There's a personal loan from my parents, which Mm is Mm $115,000. There is the property tax, which is about Mm $100,000. There are are ridiculous cars, which are Mm $140,000. Are they on the market for sale? No. They need to be today. Okay. Okay. Now, is he, the, the thing about business is this, okay? You do have to be an optimist to operate a business. And to operate a business in California, you have to be an unbelievable optimist with the taxes and the regulations and the crap you all face, okay? It's unbelievable. So he has to be an optimist or he's dead in the water. So we have to have that category we can put him in. That's a good thing. Um, but what you need to hear, and I don't know the answer to this, is... 
You need to hear him articulate a detailed tactical strategy, a strategy overall, but the tactical implementation of the what items are we doing to make this thing profitable? Because all you're describing to me are signs of death of the business. He has some reason, hopefully logically, that there's a reason for life in the business. I don't know what that is. I can't, I'm not hearing his part of that story. It is possible that he's got four things that if those, that if three of the four things ever flip, that he can turn the business around. Okay. But the poor management and continuing to go further, further into debt is a pattern of, I think I can out earn my stupidity. And that's what you need to see him stop doing because it's driving you nuts. Mm -hmm. So the two of you need to sit down and you, you know, it's okay for you to quote require of him for your peace of mind as his wife, that he show you what the clear path is and exactly what the steps are to get out. Not just if I grip my teeth, it's going to get better because if I grip my teeth and keep doing the same thing, it ain't going to get better. It's going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. And I think a timeline's appropriate too, Katie, because you guys could exactly. sit here in this, like exactly. in this cycle forever and ever. And you need an, you need an end date or I would, exactly. I would be like, Hey, I will give you X amount to figure this out. But at some point you got to just stop it and go get a job. Like we have to clean this up. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. just so, Henry Cloud says in his book, Necessary Endings, that you end something when you lose logical hope that it is going to get any better. Okay? So when do you close a business? You close a business when you have no reason logically to believe it's going to turn around. And you need to see something other than all the death signs. You feel like you're sitting beside the hospice patient hearing all the signs of death coming. And you've and yet... It's not a hospice patient, maybe. Maybe it's a, just a patient that's got the flu. But that's how you're feeling because you don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on. Um, selling the warehouse is going to be a big lick. That's going to be really helpful. Getting rid of your cars is really helpful. And, um, you know, we got to get back to scorched earth. we got to get this thing right-sized to where we can make payroll and we, get, and we see a path, a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. The two of you need to find that together. Uh, and if you if don't you, see it, Katie, you speak up too, because so far time. the pattern's not been here. IRS stuff. I mean, like it's not looking good. No, he's he ha, he has poorly managed it. That's for sure. But if if there is a clear path, but otherwise we need to talk about how we're going to sell everything off and shut it down. So you're you're right on track, and, and trust your gut. You've got good gut instincts on this. This is the Ramsey Show. Sometimes our segments aren't long enough to get into everything. Obviously, the lady with four and a half million dollars worth of debt, a husband. The business is failing. She didn't know anything about it because she was not involved uh, until a few months ago, and now she's trying to uh, find her way through that. And giving her a quick answer on that's very difficult. But there's some principles that Rachel gets uh, to talk about, and I get to talk about a lot, that weave into a situation like that. By the way, the irony of that call is that's almost exactly where we are, where only I wasn't 42, I was 28. I had $4 million worth of debt. Rachel was a brand new baby when we hit bottom, but it took two and a half years of fighting for us to go all the way to the bottom to bankruptcy. So by the time I filed bankruptcy was the year she was born, but Sharon was a full-time mom with Rachel's older sister and had absolutely zero knowledge of anything going on. Not because I was deceiving her. I just didn't ask, nor did I tell. And neither did she ask. She's like, she just classic, whatever you want to do, honey and just assumed I had a clue. I thought I had a clue, and I was wrecking a business. And um, so there's a couple of things that go with this, principles for you guys to use out there uh, that'll keep you from finding yourself in a situation. They may be so far gone, they don't make it out of that. They may be bankrupt. They may lose everything. We did um, because we were so far in. So principle number one is men in particular, but ladies too, when you are running a business, it does not give you relational or wisdom permission to keep that all the other side of some kind of wall. Now, you don't need to come home and whine every night to your spouse about everything being hard. Nobody wants to hear that. But your spouse needs to be involved in all major decisions that affect the household, and that includes the running of the business period. And here's why. 
Proverbs says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, and he will have no lack of gain. And so while my sweet little wife is at home with a little baby, and she's a full-time mom with a home ec degree, she is academically not qualified to speak into the operation of my business. But the Bible says that if I listen to the wisdom of my virtuous wife, I will have no lack of gain. The way Sharon says it is, I may not understand, but I have common sense. <laughs> and she throws that around like, like, and she does have common sense. She has wisdom. And so I, after I went broke and I learned that proverb, I no longer make major financial decisions, major decisions of any kind, without Sharon and I talking it through and being in agreement. Now, sometimes we argue about it. Sometimes she's wrong. Uh, sometimes she's right, and I hear something I never heard before. And uh, but I don't, you know, we don't go and buy a two million dollar building and then tell her we did it. Um, we can, but we don't, and so. We don't, you know, I don't book, we run our calendars, we run our budgets together. We know where everything that's going on in our time, everything that's going on in our money, um, and therefore we make better decisions. And the added benefit is that our that it absolutely solidifies your marriage against the storms that will come. Yeah, and being able to, I think, go there with your spouse too is what we talk about so often is having this knowledge and understanding of who they are. Cause usually in those business conversations and or the money conversations, the person and their fears and their, you know, anxiety around this subject over here or the thoughts of this or the excitement of that, like you get to know your spouse in the middle of it too, right? I mean, like there's, there's all this added benefit to not only having somebody outside the picture looking in with a different perspective, which is so wise and so healthy, but you also, you're doing stuff as a team. And when you're married, that's where a rich marriage comes from is that you're on the same team and you're talking about it and you get to know your spouse in the middle of it even more versus again, feeling like, okay, this whole part of our life is over here and I'm not, I'm not going to bring you in. So if you're in the situation where that lady's husband is, you're the husband or the wife and you're in that situation, you're running a business. As of today, it is now your job to unpack everything that's going on. That is of, that is of note anything of size. We don't have to discuss where we buy copier paper, okay? But we are going to talk about the big things that are happening in the business. Here's what's going on. Here's how we're running the business. Here's the the things. And we're not going to move play move the the big pieces around the chessboard without talking about it further. If you are the person who is at home or is not in the business, so to speak, it is your job as of today to know what the flip is going on in your own life. You are not a little child. You have to plug in. And if they don't want you to, that's a bad sign. Um, if you're just too lazy to, you don't want to put forth the effort. Oh, he's handling it. I'll let him handle it. That's just laziness. And you're going to make really stupid butt decisions, and you're going to craft a life that you don't like at the end of the story if you don't plug in and make these calls together like two grown-up adults one of well we're not alike we don't we look at things differently absolutely two, most of the time opposites attract larry burkett used to say if two people just alike get married one of you is unnecessary of course one of you is a spender of course one of you is a saver of course one of you is an abundance and the other one's a scarcity of course so what that, what that means is you're getting good, rounded viewpoints on these major decisions. And you don't reach a point that, oh, I borrowed on our home where our children sleep that to feels, buy a warehouse. Can I say that feels deceitful? Like when you start to muddle the waters, which I know happens a lot in business, but you, you start to reach over to the, per, like putting that in danger that that feels like it's well, i don't know why it feels different if it's like oh i went and got a warehouse but my own home like my home that feels so personal i don't like it that felt that felt deceitful to yeah. me well it's not 
um, because the, the arrangement that you they were think? no the arrangement they were operating on is she don't care he can do whatever he wants and so he did whatever he wants and he had no he had no thought that he was going to lose the home he he thinks it's just going to turn around and he's going to out earn his stupidity <laughs> make all this other money he didn't he didn't sit down and it's really sad. he didn't sat down and go now I will I will tell you this having adopted this we don't do major things without Sharon it means that I actually have to not only sell myself on the idea of going forward on something i have to sell her for on it mm-hmm. and it makes me it makes me critically think through the idea more right. thoroughly knowing i've got to get agreement from someone else i've got to be able to explain it in such a way that it makes sense and get agreement that's why we always talk about don't do your money alone even if you're single have somebody an account something that you are accountable to right yep a spouse a friend Again, if you're single, maybe it's a mentor. Like whatever it is, whatever it's, the situation is, it's hilarious is. that inside of our own little brains, we can talk. We can make the dumbest We're thing. We're crazy. We can make the We're dumbest thing crazy. sound smart inside our own little brains. But when you have to speak it and set it out on the table in front of someone that loves you and that cares about your future, as soon as you set it out on the table, sometimes before they say anything, you go, "Oh, that's dumb." <laughs> Oh, that's I. And when that was in my head, it was really smart. But when I put it out there in the daylight, it looks really stupid. And it's almost like that time that you had this problem and you sat down with your friend. And by the time you explained your problem to your friend, you knew the answer. And all that is, is your brain had to process from simple digits floating around in your brain into verbalized. When you have to turn something into language, it requ- your brain is required to go through another higher function of critical thinking skills. So when you turn something from a thought into language and put it in front of someone else, it makes you process the thing you're talking about more thoroughly. That's why you already know the answer before your friend ever says anything. You go, oh, I, I, thanks for listening. I now know what to do. And they never said a word. They just look at you like a hoot owl, right? It's like, and, and the same thing's true here. You know, it, it's when you have to do this with your spouse, it opens up everything. It's like right before this show, I was telling Dave about my new prepping conspiracy that I heard last night. And he looked at me like... Like a hoot owl, and he just shook yeah. his head, and we just went to air. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's good to say it out loud sometimes. He's like, oh, I don't know. Well, I don't well, know about that conspiracy. Guess, guess there's one in every family. Create your free every dollar budget today, the simplest way to budget for your life.